I'm just gonna ask you the questions, and I'll just watch it and retype it later. Oh, so is it recording? Yes, it is recording now. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Wait, actually, oh, I can't ask that yet. Okay. Oh. What year were you born? 1948. 1948. Okay, I'm just gonna write that down. It's the same year that Wisconsin became a state. Really? Really. That's crazy. I'm pretty sure. Learning about the, we learned about that at social studies. Yeah. Okay, how many people are in your family? Names and who's older, oldest to youngest, or youngest oldest? No. Are you talking about when I grew up, or are you talking about my children, or um, like your siblings? My siblings. Okay. Uh, I had my mom and my dad, and then two older brothers, and their names were Arnie and Dan. Arnie and Dan. Yeah. Nice. How did you get to school? Is it different from then? Is is it different than now? We rode the bus because we lived in the country. My brothers, when they were younger, they had to walk about a mile to school, and then eventually uh, we all rode a bus. And when I overslept, my dad took me in the old clunker truck to school. The old clunker. It was a 1937 truck he'd take me to school with. <laughs> and how much did you oversleep so you oh, could ride in that, that old thing? Well, maybe once every three weeks. <laughs> and I was so embarrassed riding that truck to school. I had my dad let me out to, you know, a block or two from school. And boy, I'll tell you, I would drive down Main Street with my dad today if I had the chance. I miss him. <laughs> what were some of the? Oh my gosh, I can't. Oh, can't read my own handwriting. Okay, I got it now. What are What are some of the rules you had to follow in school? Um, they were really like no talking. No you know, talking. Yeah, really? unless you raised your hand. Um, they just expect you to to work hard and behave. <laughs> Really? Yeah, yeah. That, that's like our school, except there's yeah. some little weird ones in there. Yeah. Too. <laughs> right. Right. Um, how were kids disciplined in your school, and did you ever get in trouble? Um, I don't recall how kids were disciplined. I suspect they went to the principal's office. Uh, nobody wore a dunce hat or anything, <laughs> and um, you know. Not to sound like Miss Goody Two Shoes, but I really wasn't in trouble. Wow. Once I got caught sucking on a piece of candy in English class, and he just, you like know, threw it away. Spit it away. Oh, just spit it out. <laughs> he called on me. That's what happened. And then I couldn't get my answer out. <laughs> so, next page. Yes. Yeah. Describe one memory from school. That one? No. The candy? The one memory I'll, I have is I had, I was in first grade. I had this little pleated skirt on, I remember, and I was on the swing. Aww. And then we tended to jump off. And I remember <laughs> jumping off, and my skirt stayed on the swing. Did you lose your skirt? I did, and then I was standing there in my slip. <laughs> we wore slips then underneath our dresses and skirts, little white sheer, you know. You don't know what a Fancy. slip is. <laughs> Fancy. So I'll never forget that. <laughs> never forget my that. My skirt. <laughs> my skirt, my skirt. What type of clothes did you have to wear at school? You kind of just answered that, but what kind of yeah, clothes? Yeah, we, you know, kind of like kids did today. I mean, you know, um, we could wear slacks, we could wear dresses, we could... You know. Kind of anything, just yeah. like. Oh, and I love my pony shoes. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> pony shoes. Pony shoes. Perfect. Yeah. Um, at what age did you finish school and start working? Um, do you mean high school? Um, or college and then start working. Okay. I was probably, well, I graduated from school when I was like 17. And then I went to college, but I didn't finish college right away. It took me 30 years to finish college because I really wanted to stay home and raise my kids. 
And so every time I'd go back, well, I used to do this at home. Like, yeah, and then I remember I was going to sign up for a class, and oh, gee, it was a Cub Scout night, and I couldn't miss Cub Scouts because I was a leader. So, I, you know, I always had these interruptions, but 30 years later, I graduated from UW Student Point. I stuck to it. You stuck to it. And yeah, I you advise You persevered. Anybody. I persevered. What are you most proud of? My family. I really am. I have four wonderful, caring kids, and I have 10 wonderful, caring grandchildren, and they are all con making wonderful contributions to the world. And I think that's the best thing anybody can do is raise a family that will contribute and just make the world a better place. Nice. How does music affect your life? I love music, and I'm so glad that I took band when I was, um, I started in fifth grade. Wait, what instrument did you play? I played the clarinet. And I don't know why, but most kids started in sixth grade, but our school started in fifth grade. So I played fifth grade all the way through my first year of college. So, um... I'm glad I had that background because, you know, it's, um, I can read music, I can play the piano a little bit, I can read notes in church and sing. And so, yeah, I think music's very important. Kids should be exposed to it. Yeah, I agree. Yes. Okay. Describe a memory of one of your birthdays. This is, Gotta think about this one. No, this one's kind of funny. I was. Okay. This was a. Funnier than the skirt? No, this was. I was in elementary school, and I didn't have many friend parties, but I had one, and for some reason, I invited invited some boys too. Oh, and then it's scandalous. Yes, and then when I opened one of the packages, it wasn't from one of the boys, but somebody had given me underwear. And I opened that in front of all these little boys and girls. Oh, my gosh. And I'll never forget that birthday. Never. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Off stage. Okay. How did you meet your spouse? We went to school together. We really? went to high school together. We went to different schools up until high school, and then that's how... But we never dated in high school. Oh, really? Yeah, we had our class picnic our senior year, and we went, we had a party, and then that's kind of how we, that was when we first started dating. Oh, really? School that's was nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, that's a nice story. Yeah. Okay, this is probably going to be my favorite question, because I love thinking about this. How did you choose the names for your children? Oh, Okay, my, oh, my son, Brad, when I was in um, vocational school, I went to school with a boy named Brad. And I don't know why, I always liked the name, and he was a nice young man. So that's how Brad got his name. He would have been Jamie if he'd have been a girl, but he wasn't. Um, BJ was born on Bill's birthday, so we named her um, Billy Joel after her father. And if she'd have been a boy, she'd have been a Nathan. Melissa, your mom. I'm mom. Yes. Um, I just always liked the name. It seemed just really? like a really cool name. And it seemed to fit her? It seemed to fit her. Yes. Kind of, yeah. Just a girlish name. And um, I'm trying to think what name we picked out. Oh, if she'd have been a boy... She'd have been Wade. And isn't Wade? that funny? Because her friend Wade was in med school with her. And Ashley, when I had Ashley, nobody named their baby Ashley. Okay. But I named um, my daughter Ashley because of the book Gone with the Wind. The I don't think I've ever read that. Really? Oh, that's a very good story. I and, have to read that now. Yeah, it's about the Civil War. And the, there was a guy in there. And his name was Ashley. But I liked the name for a girl, yeah. so I named her Ashley. And what was I going to name her if she was a girl? 
or a boy. Did you say Wade? No, or was that for... it was Wade. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah. I can't remember. She was the last one born. I don't know. I must have just known she was a girl. Oh, so she's see. Ashley. Yeah, right. Ashley. Um, not, I was thinking of her middle name, but your mom, Melissa. I named her Melissa Ray, and that's where you got your middle name from. Yeah, where'd you get Ray right from? I don't know. It just sounded, you know, the, there were so many common names, and I just liked... Just fit with R A E. Yeah, just yeah. fit. Melissa Ray. And now we have Pisa Ray. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Have you ever learned a lesson from making a mistake? Oh, you always learn a lesson from making a mistake. Sometimes you say something when you shouldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's always hard, especially when you're young, to think ahead of the consequence of what you might say or do. But it's very important that you learn that at an early age. Um, yeah. Gotten a few speeding tickets. So um, I've learned a lesson from there. It's just good to follow the laws. <laughs> yeah, that sounds smart. Yeah. Okay. What is your favorite memory of a holiday? Favorite memory of a holiday? I guess when I was a kid, just Christmas, um, waking up in the morning and coming down. and You know, my brothers were little, and oh, we were so excited with all the little presents. And yeah, just a bunch of, you know, holiday memories when I was younger just because you it was magical it really was magical and yeah and now it's just a lot of work it's too <laughs> much a lot now. of money <laughs> it's too much now yeah how has the world changed from what from like when people like okay wait how has the world changed for the kids now from when like from when you were a kid well, you know, do you have a couple of days that I could share this answer with you? Sum it all up or just yeah. focus on one point. Yeah. I think uh, we've gotten away from faith and family. That was very important when I was growing up. And now, you know, every there's so many things going on. Families find it very difficult to even eat together. Many of them don't go to church um, where they get you know where they can really connect with God um, yeah I'd say that's the biggest thing that faith and family is just getting weaker and thinner and thinner and there's more broken families and you know back when I grew up I mean like everybody had a mom and a dad pretty much you know and now that's getting to be the exception and the rule that, that you have a, a family unit of a mom and dad. And so I'd say that's how it's changed. That's okay. What piece of advice would you give to someone my age? I would say, because I know who you are right now, I would say don't change. Um, always remember what's important to you and no matter how much pressure you get from the outside world or other kids um, just hold your ground because if you sense something's wrong it is and I remember your mom when she was in high school I was talking with her and she said to me mom don't worry I know what I want to do and what I don't want to do and that's good advice, like for you. you. If you think about things ahead of time, then when you get in that situation, You'll know what you do. know what you want to do, you know. And there are things that, there's little things that might, you know, affect your life, but there's huge things that will change it and, and even end it. So I ask you, God gave you one life to really take care of it. And always be grateful for him for giving you life. I love you, Daniel. I love you. Well, that was pretty special. There's some more. Don't worry. 
<laughs> okay. Um, what is the most important characteristic of a good friend? <sighs> that they're, they're just always there for you. That you know no matter what, um, they'll just always be your friend. You know, they'll never give up on you and you don't give up on them. I'm going to cry. And they make your life better. If you if you have a friend that doesn't make your life brother better, they're not a friend. You know. Okay. What can my generation learn from your generation? Well, um, you know, like I just heard them saying that we can learn from history. Things that happened in the past. But we, we kind of forget about that because history does repeat itself. And, you know, the same things that happened back then are starting to happen now. Um, even clothes, you know, um, clothes that you wore, I wore a long time ago. Oh my gosh, now they're back in again, you know. So, um, what was the question? <laughs> What can my generation learn from yeah. your generation? Yeah. Well, things are always changing, but um, kids today need to remember there are such a thing as morals and a, and a conscience, and I would urge them to develop a good conscience and to work hard, because I see, like, your mom, how she just work so hard and um, try to always make the world a better place. I mean, we tried to, but now you have so many more ways you can make the world a better place. How would you make the world a better place? Oh, man. I'd like to think, I guess like now, I, you know, because I'm so busy with grandchildren, um, sometimes I feel sad that I really loved doing the things I did when they were younger, like being a scout leader and teaching religion and, you know, things like that. And now now it seems like, now if the kids need me, now that's where my focus is, you know, um, to, to be there for them. They should pray more too because every one of you, every, you know, all your grandkids and kids, there's always something to pray for. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. What can your generation learn from my generation? Well, this is kind of tough because the older a person gets, you look at things differently and you cannot. I remember like my, my folks, it was difficult for them to understand why I did things the way I did. Now that I'm like the senior generation, I'm going like too like, what are you kids thinking? You know what I mean? So um, <laughs> there's a lot of good kids in the world, but there's a lot of kids that just, they don't realize they have this one life. and. What are you going to do with it? So I think they need to take care of themselves better and think about a better future for them and everybody around them. Because it is. It's hard, you know. We, we grew up with a lot of respect. We showed people a lot of respect, especially our elders. And, you know, a lot of people don't see that anymore. Even little things like, a boy will hold a door, a young boy will hold a door open for me, nine times out of ten. I think, wow, that is so neat. You know, you're showing respect. But the other ones, now they'll just walk right through. So the idea of respect, and, and then that goes as far as teachers and parents and police. And, you know, I think, um, you know, I'd like to see more respect, you know. So, so you could learn respect from us well I can because sometimes <laughs> I do think I do see that you know when I see a, a basketball player knock somebody down from an opposing team and he pulls them up I think that's really nice 
you know. It doesn't matter that it isn't his colored shirt on his jean shirt, you know. But um, I can, from you, I can learn that there are a lot of people that work hard, but society has gotten so there's a lot of people that aren't, aren't they don't even care about contributing. You know what I mean? They, they can't behave in school. They can't, you know, they have all these wonderful things they could take advantage of, and they, uh, you know, uh, uh. Yeah. so. Yeah. <sighs> what is your favorite sport to watch me play? Oh, my gosh. Volleyball. Why? I don't know, because you seem to light up when you're on the volleyball court. Not that you don't light up on the other yeah, I know it's quartz and stuff, but you just, I, I can tell it makes you happy to be out there. And that's what it's all about. You got to be happy, enjoy it, and if you win, that's a perk. <laughs> but playing is, yeah. Playing. What do you think about the name Noah for a girl? Because right now I like that name. Oh. How, what do you think about it? I think it's cute. I just heard somebody called Noah. I would probably spell it a different way, so it would be like more like a girl name or something. Uh-huh. Maybe it, maybe like with no H, just like N O A. Yeah, but like that would be cute. Yeah, yeah. So I and it's biblical. That. Yeah, yeah. See, like when we were kids, when like when Grandma had me, you you were expected to name use names from the Bible. Oh really? Mm-hmm. That's why there weren't all these. There were a lot of names. There were a lot of Marys and Josephs and, you know, names like that. But, yeah. No, I just heard that. I think that's a cute. Yeah, and really, I guess you can use switcheroo names around, you know. If you would have had another kid, what would you have named it? I'm not sure. Well, I didn't use the name Matthew for bread. I didn't use the name Wade. I might go with Wade. Well, if it was a girl, would you still name it Wade? <laughs> Probably not. I'm not sure why. Um, I probably would want to think of something a little different because everybody's thinking about different names. <laughs> but I'm not sure what that would be. <laughs> yeah. um, what is one message you would give to the world if everybody could hear you? Um, you know, peace, we have to find a way for peace in our world. And as long as people and, you know, rulers and kings and presidents want power, we'll probably never have peace because the root of all evil, I think, is power that people strive for. So it would be peace in peace and that doesn't mean just worldwide that means in your heart and in your home and in your school and in your classroom and on your softball team and you know people that just get along you know but you know we've turned into a me generation we haven't thought so much and that's another thing I think we were more of a bigger community um, it wasn't so me oriented when I grew up and now it's a me world, I think, to a large extent, which is kind of selfish. Yeah. And it isn't everybody, but yeah. Yeah. If there was a new planet and you would get to name it, what would you name it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> a new planet. Well, you know, I like the old name, the old planet Pluto. I think I'd bring back the name Pluto. <laughs> I grew up with Pluto. You mean you wouldn't name it after me? Well, P- Pace and Pluto. How's that? <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <coughs> okay. One more question. Oh, geez. One more question. <laughs> what is kindness to you? Kindness is um, showing through your actions and your words, you are, um, that you care about other people. Um, what was the definition of love? 
Oh, kindness is willing the good of another. So I'm not thinking about me, I'm thinking about you, you know, and how it will make you feel. I remember when I was growing up, be before I did things, it always, I always thought, how would this make my mom and dad feel? You know, like that, because it mattered a whole lot. I never wanted to disappoint them. And that doesn't mean, you know, scoring 100 points a game or anything yeah. like that, but I, I just never wanted to disappoint them. And I'm sure it probably did, you know. <laughs> but they never really told me that. I'd like to think I tried to do a really good job of that. So, yeah, so I would say, kind of willing the good of the other. Like, I want to make you happy, you know? And in making you happy, I'm happy. Yeah. So it isn't all about, well, I want to be happy, and I want to, you know. And oh, well, maybe Payson could be happy. You know, it's kind of an after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so are we done? Yes, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You know what? Maybe I love you too. Maybe in the summertime I could interview you. That would be fun. May have some Maybe I could time. submit that for an extra credit assignment. How about that, Miss Ryder? Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Yeah. That could work. All right. Thank so you, Nana. You're welcome. That was a neat assignment. Yeah. Because sometimes you just um, don't know about these things. Yeah, it's cool to think about. The scary, you didn't ask me about the scariest thing that ever happened to me. What was the scariest thing that ever happened to I you? got locked in the movie theater. Oh, <gasps> what happened? My brothers left me there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like you. I had two older brothers. We went to the movie and they let, you know, mom and grandma and grandpa dropped me off and I, w I fell asleep and the movie was over and they left. Oh. And I woke up and... <laughs> Dark. They're gone. I'm out there pounding on the door. <laughs> Let me out. Somebody came along and called the movie theater guy. Boy, did my brothers get yelled at <laughs> from my mom and dad. Oh, no. That was a horror. I wrote a paper on that. I'll never forget. That was traumatic. That's, that has affected me. That all sounds my life. terrifying. It was. Well, thank you for answering my question. <laughs> well, thank you for asking them. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Nana. <laughs> well, you better get your mom home. Yep, don't want to ride in the snow. Yeah.